All right, so I am back with another spot welder video. So the KK Moon obviously didn't work out well, and I have upgraded to this scab. This is the Maletrix or Maletrix V4. It's an Arduino spot welder. Um, I bought a Turnigy 5000 milliamp battery for it. This is a 70 to 140C peak discharge. The usual recommended one I see is I think a 65 to 130 C so this one was actually much cheaper than the recommended Eternity one and it's rated at a higher discharge rate which is good so I've been using this guy for a couple different projects um, I've already made I made two of these Milwaukee M12 battery packs today I made one more earlier this week anyways I've been dialing this thing in and it's been doing really well. So I've already done 135 welds on this thing. A couple were practice, but mostly we're just making the battery packs. Um, I like to set this thing at 20 milliseconds with my 0.2 millimeter thick pure nickel strip at 8 millimeters wide. Um, again, Operation is fairly easy to use. There's a really good assembly and there's a really good like guide on how to use it. Rule of thumb is 17 milliseconds is fine for 0.2. I give it a little bit more juice just because I've been finding this works real well and it doesn't blow through anything at all. Um, yeah, so I guess like the KK Moon stuff, let's just start doing welds. place you properly so that you don't fall over and so that you get a good shot anyways that should do all right so these are some dead cells that I have I'm just gonna start tacking start spot welding so the leads are much longer than the KK moon ones making operation much easier Again, I have a foot pedal and everything, so very easy to use. Let's just do eight right away and then start peeling them off. So for the leads here, I did kind of take a file and round them a little bit so the edges aren't sharp because that's just typical, typical practice that everybody recommends. Um, otherwise, this battery, if you look right here, each cell, well, the full pack is at 11.9 volts, so that's about 50%, I think, or it, like it's getting close to where I would want to replace it. First cell is 1.9, or second cell is 1.95, third cell is 3.98, and the first cell is at 3.96. Um, these are all, I think, 8 gauge this well this is seven gauge the leads are seven gauge and the wiring going into the the power so or the power supply wires are eight gauge and these are i think 10 gauge so that's how that works anyways let's start peeling off so as you can see right here you get four holes, and the edge right here definitely ripped off. Same story here. Four holes, edge is definitely ripped. So this is very, very good. I'm going to give you a nickel on nickel weld. So usually these, you need a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it at 20 
milliseconds and then we'll see how it does. So hopefully I didn't get out of frame but anyways this should be back in frame and we're going to take a look at how these four nickel to nickel welds did. Anyways, so the nickel to nickel at 20 milliseconds, if you can see there is one definite hole and it's pretty beat up. So you can't get a perfect nickel to nickel weld at 20 milliseconds. I might crank it up to 22, 23 milliseconds. But it's definitely better than the KK Moon. Toss this piece out. So I'm going to crank this guy up to 23 milliseconds. And we're going to do another nickel to nickel spot weld and see what it does. I haven't cranked this up further than I think 25 milliseconds. You can definitely see the leads jump some more. And it's definitely hot when you touch this stuff. Trying to get a good grasp to peel this stuff apart. Oh yeah, okay. So if you look right here, there's de there's one definite hole, and on this side it looks like it took the nickel from the other side. And this is what the other side looks like. So it kind of went off the edge a little bit, but you can definitely see that it ripped it. Let me get a little bit better. I'm going to do this again just to show you guys how good it is. So a better example right here. So again, we're at 23 milliseconds, and the LiPo battery that I'm using is probably 50 to 60% capacity. So it's not fully charged or anything, and I do not have any worries. Again, very, very hot. Feeling this stuff is kind of just very, very difficult. Flatten this guy out a little bit. Flatten this guy out a little bit. So when you look at it, there is one hole, and it looks like it pulled it from this side also, from the other tab. And if we look here, same story, there's one hole, and it looks like you're pulling the uh, nickel strip off the other tab. So very, very strong welds in this case. Let me give you what this would look like if we were doing it on 23 milliseconds onto the battery itself 
I'm not really worried about blowing through at the moment, and I don't think I want to blow through anything, especially even though the cell's dead. But 23 milliseconds, let's go. So the lead slipped on that second weld, but the third one's back on. So, uh, yeah. Here you go. Giant chunk stayed on the cell, and this is how bad the strip looks after ripping it off. So nearly every weld is stayed on here so again and this guy is strong as heck let me give you a close-up on everything some of the features anyways this dial isn't the most responsive but i believe you can go like all the way up to oops. i believe you can go all the way up to 50 milliseconds oh no, you can do more, so maybe it's something like 70. Or even higher. Even even still, it's more than you'll ever need. Um, here's your battery meter. It's at halfway. This says manual because I'm using the foot pedal. But you can disconnect this and set it to an auto pulse, which I will show you shortly. But let me get this back down to where I like it. So, auto pulse, you can activate it on, and that's your auto pulse stuff. Uh, let's see, you can set a delay. So, when you have the two leads touching, there's a two second delay before it pulses, so you don't, so you can like have some time to set up properly. Let's see, there's a battery alarm. So, I have it set to 11.3 volts, which I believe is like 30% of what this capacity is so this is when it's too low and then it doesn't fire but again this is my little battery warning too just in case this fails on me so i have this one also set to 11.3 so basically when it discharges to 11.3 and it spikes or spikes that low this is gonna go off really loud um let's see what else is there to talk about Oops, I should probably set that back. The short pulse is something I don't understand, but his guide just says leave it at 12%. And the last thing is if you hold, press and hold the foot pedal, it gives you this. So it tells you the volts that are still available from this battery. 11.9 which is exactly what this guy's telling me and then the estimated amount of amps that you can get per discharge so this is 1400 amps um i don't know how accurate that is but it, it is a nice little thing to tell you about and then you just press the center button to get out of that menu it's an arduino so you can like plug it in and then change some stuff this button right here allows you to change some stuff and I don't know what this plug is for right there. Again, I'm not super techy, and the, and the maker of this, that guy has plenty of DIY guides on how to assemble this and everything like that. But for basic usage, which is me just making some batteries, this thing is great. So, slightly longer video, but I really hope you guys find some usage out of this.